What's up, Shoe Schwab? It is time for another wonderful podcast. This time I have Shelly, owner of, what is it? Sick Moose Vision Care Center in Sick Moose, BC. See, that's, that's why I had her say it, because that's a mouthful and I want to mess it up. Today we are at the Barley Station, having her favorite foods. We're, we're, we're having a pretzel and calamari. We're a barbarian pretzel. Yes, I haven't had one of those. That sounds pretty good. Which is very October festy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Yummy, and calamari. Why, why calamari? Well, what is there not to like about deep fried squid? She has a point. She has a point. And we have... Kombucha. You've got the ginger. ginger. I've got the pomegranate. Oh, okay. I didn't know that we got two different ones. We did. Awesome. Maybe we didn't. Maybe we both got pomegranate. Oh, I'm excited. I love kombucha. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. got like natural fizz. Yes. That's what I really like about it. It's, it's got like that natural yes. deliciousness. It's got that it's slight so. bite. Well, it's fermented too. Out of a mushroom. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, that's how, that's how it's made. It's made in like a yeasty, yeah. liquidy oh, deliciousness thanks. of pot. But your business is all yes. about glasses. Uh, I help glasses, contact lenses, eyewear, safety eyewear, sun eyewear, you name it. How long have you been doing it for? 30 years now. Why? 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 You, Shell, you could have been anything. Why did you choose an eye doctor? I didn't choose an eye doctor. Well, uh, I looked at medicine. And I decided I didn't want to be on call. Okay. Yeah. So, and and now that I've gotten older, I realize that that's probably a really good thing that I decided not to to be on call or do shift work. You wouldn't have actually been able to move the ladder to not do that. <laughs> the people people who go into that field are they actually a slave to the shift work like that? Like, I, I don't know. When you're called, you're called. That's it. You're in. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. I've, I've never had to do shift work. My husband does shift work, and I know he's pretty messed up for a few days after he gets off. Trying to recycle the whole. Ah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Are you worn glasses all your, all your life? Uh, since I was twelve. Okay. Yeah. Or contact lenses, one or the other. So. There is a lot of straight-to-consumer everything nowadays, including yes. glasses yes. of all sorts. Thoughts on that? Because there's a lot of good, there's a lot of bad. A lot of bad. So um, let's just go over the bad, because basically the only good is price point. That's, not necessarily. Really? No, not necessarily, no. One of the places... You, do, you get what you pay for. That's true. Yes. Well, I, I've gone to a website called clearly.ca, yes. and they're pretty, pretty okay, but... The main issue that we found with them is that it was actually very low quality lenses. Right. And coatings. It's, it's really uh, what the, the technology is really evolving to, and if you talk to uh, Nikon, Zeiss, uh, Sola, the, the, the big manufacturers, right. is the, the coatings that we put on there, they're so. Uh, what do we say? Any? No, or, well, they're, yeah, they're thin, but there's, there's a lot of research and development that goes into them. Um, you know, Zeiss sent a man to the moon. If you see the, the picture of the uh, Buzz Aldrin on the moon, that's mm-hmm. a Zeiss coating that he's wearing to protect his eyes from gamma radiation. Oh, wow. So Zeiss has been forefront of, of research that tech. of that technology, anything to do with optics. Quite amazing. They actually have a coating out now that takes those annoying LED uh, headlights from being annoying to tolerable. Really? That doesn't come with a lot of, of money and research and, and of course, cost. Yeah. Um, paying someone $200,000 a year for one dude to do research and development, and there's like 20 of them, that, that adds up quick. Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure how much they get paid, but I'm, oh, no, I'm, oh, no. I'm sure. They're engineers. Come on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, sure, it's, I'm sure they do well. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> one of the things that bothers people most about the glasses industry is mm-hmm. finding replacements of hinges, of, le- of lenses, of everything about them. Yes. Is it specifically done just so they could sell more? Or is it like, okay, new fashion, new style, we're really it's, keeping up with the Joneses. It's new fashion, new style. So the, the suppliers I deal with, uh, 
they're guaranteed to have parts for at least a couple years. Okay. Uh, sometimes you get a frame that's really popular, it's on back order, we can't even get parts for it six months down the road until, oh, we've got our next shipment in in three months. Really? So, uh, sometimes it's a supply chain issue, sometimes it's a fashion trend. So trend. Yeah, if, if the frame is a good seller, uh, they keep it around. If it's not a good seller, they drop below so many units, it becomes discontinued, they keep parts for a while, and then... And nothing's particularly standardized. No. Right? No. They literally... You think, you think, you like, you know, this is a hinge, there's 50 different types. This is a screw. It just looks like a little screw, and you think that there'd be just one screw that we use, but no. No. No, there's like 10 no. and 20 different screws. Why? I, this is like why I don't understand. And that's not even that's not even within the same that's within the same company. Really? Never mind when you're starting to deal with 10 or 20 different companies. Wow. Yeah. Just like the thread depth, the pitch, the everything about it. You it's just a screw. Never mind the the temple or the front. As an optometrist that actually has a storefront and brick and mortar, mm -hmm. are you would you like want like a company to step in like a, a Lorco or a Napa and make knockoff parts and be able like okay guys we can supply this type of stuff to you for cheap or like have an actual stock supply but that would be quite difficult since everything's custom. Like, everything's. Yeah, and wow. it probably, what I can see is with 3D printing technology, it will oh, probably yeah. become even more customized. And people want that. They want customized eyewear. Is that something you're going to, like, dabble in? Like, not in the back of your shot? Not shot at this Come time. on. Not at this but time. you would make millions. In fact, you can even start your own line. Oh, oh I, could, I, could, I, could, totally. I could. I could. I have the Shelly Geyer line. Every, every movie star and everyone else out there does, but no. That's very true. That, that may be one thing that you see down the road is, is with, especially with the advent of 3D printing, in plastic, more so in plastic frames, not so much in metal frames. Okay, so now that you even bring up 3D printing, because that is just a thing that's going to be mm -hmm. in the future, does that concern you for hitting the market like just people like going to a, if, if, a dude on the block who can make me a sweet pair of glasses that I can wear like do you think that's gonna really affect the market too much like the, all that research and no, development there's, there's gonna be there's, there's always gonna be, be people who I mean an Elton John's a great example how many different frames have you ever seen Elton jo John wear? Thousands. Thousands, Thousands yeah. Uh, so he's, he's, you know, a person like that is is going to pay for that sort of technology, the one-offs that only, oh, only yeah. he's going to have to have. So yeah, okay. I mean, there's going to be a cost associated with that. Yeah. I'd like to see what's going to happen with that and Etsy. Because that's uh, Etsy's an online shopping right so it's very like right. art artisan artsy sort of stuff yes. but that is like perfect for that would just fall into mm -hmm. actually very interesting is now there are some design issues oh up to the face uh face and um, being able to put a set of lenses in there i mean if you walked into my office with a frame yeah. that you printed with your free printer can you do that can you shape stuff like that well like how much of that is machine shop because you send away for that stuff how much of that is actually done by machine and then you having to be able to carve it out? Like there, it's about a 50-50. I'm not... Do you get blanks? Like, can you do that? I or can't make frames. No, 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 blank lenses. Oh, yeah. Every lens that is ordered comes in a blank about yay big. And then it's actually custom cut to your frame, to the frame that it's going into. At the... At, at whoever does the... the and then it gets shipped to you. And then they and get you shipped to me. And finite sort of... If it no, needs no, it. everything's complete. Oh, really? I don't have the facilities that I can actually do lens cutting yet. I may or may not. That may be something like GW. That's just another service quite yeah, a of lot of optometrists provide. Yeah, you know, it's like one of those standard things that I think, well, I'm an optometrist. I should probably have that. But eh, maybe not. That. But we have food in front of us now. Yeah, we do. And we should eat. Yeah, it's getting cold. Take a gander at all of that deliciousness. Pickles. Very, I love it. I've never had it. I can't wait to dig in. Oh, I am all about the pickle. <laughs> oh, yeah. The pickle's good. Not as good as my pickles. Is there a special way to eat this? Uh, no, just eat it. Just eat it, okay. Yeah.
That's always been my attitude towards food. Just eat it. Just put it in the blender, get her down. Yeah, yeah. When was the first time you had one of these? Uh, first time I had one of those would have been when I was in optometry school. Really? Yes. Tell me about that. How was optometry school? Optometry school was interesting. I made a lot of really good friends. It was a lot of work. Mm. Uh, it's supposed to be a plate to <laughs> uh, We actually just had our 30th anniversary reunion in Victoria in July. Congratulations. Yes. So. Generally, there's an optometry convention somewhere we all email each other and say, hey, we're going to get together for a high school reunion. We do. What platform do you usually um, message each other on? Is it just straight email? You email. Guys? We okay. all have each other's email addresses. Old school, hey? Yeah. It works. It's private. It works. How was... It works. How long is optometry school? Uh, when I went to optometry school, you had to do one or two years of science and then four years of optometry school. Now it's three to four years of science and then another four years of optometry school. Wow. It's quite a bit. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, as technology starts coming out, things advance, you do tend to have to learn more and more and more before you're even allowed to go out in the world. And then you really hope that the people who are already out in the world have kept up with technology today. <laughs> well, we have to. Well, yeah. you do. Yeah, we do. We have to do at least 20 hours of continuing education every year. Really? Yes. Like there's a board that just tracks that? Yeah. Well, that's good. I yeah. mean, it means it keeps someone accountable. It does, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're very, very good at keeping track of us. Always need someone to big brother the big brothers, eh? Well, we're a self-regulated profession, so we have to police ourselves. What is that? That would be horseradish or something. Horseradish mayo. Yeah. All right. The German mustard's really good. I'm about that. It's quite salty. I love the giant. Chunks of salt all over a good pretzel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's the first time because Kitchener Waterloo has a very large uh, Mennonite German population. Really? In the area? Yes. So uh, Kitchener actually used to be called Berlin before the First World War. Interesting. Mm. Huh. And then, of course, during the First World War, it wasn't cool to be German. Yep, fair so, enough. So Berlin, Canada was renamed Kitchener after Lord Kitchener. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is a bit of history. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. What is it that they call science? Like, ooh, science in optometry school, but like, what does it actually cover? <laughs> science? What is science? Okay, like physics science or like eye science? Like what is it that you actually study in the class? Oh, where would you like me to start? It's actually, there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of science. So we, we obviously, optometrists, we're going to start with optics. Right. Um, lenses, lights, anything to do with lenses, lights, lasers. Wow. We, we pretty much know it all. Okay, it sounds like there's some sort of amazing pranks that could happen. No? No, no tomfoolery? Well, you were, you were in school for years, something could have happened. We went to Oktoberfest a lot. Just you and your friends just like, yeah, let's go to Oktoberfest. Oh, no, time. no, it was, it, was very, um, it was very coordinated. We all went as our mass. As a group. To the actual, like, the original stomping grounds of the Oktoberfest, or like a... a... In, in, in Kitchener, Wyoming. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. <coughs> awesome. So we're going to finish this up, Love devour it, the rest of it, down this. Anything else you want to say to the wonderful people oh. that you show up? Oh, well, science. So, optics. And we did biology. We did chemistry. Right. Biochemistry, uh, psychology. One of the, probably one of the most interesting classes I took was the psychology of sight. So how you think you see the things you think you see. 
explain that a little bit more. Yeah. You just little. How you think you see, you think the things you see. You see. Um, percep your perception is your reality. Right. Okay. So a great example. Um, basically, the world is as it is out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, how your senses input that reality. Are you talking? I watched a TED talk a little while ago. Right. And there was this old gentleman on stage. And he was talking about seeing things that were not actually there because mm -hmm. your eyesight mm -hmm. is doing something. And it's mm -hmm. actually incredibly more common than people think. And they, they think that they're actually losing their mind, but they're not. They're actually seeing like old figures. Yeah. That, that's what you meant? No, not, not quite to that extent, but I mean, if I look out the window, I see a truck going by, a white truck going by. Now, if I was my brother, okay. who is terribly, terribly color deficient, um, he might, I mean, he would still see a white truck going by, but now that brown car that just went by, he might see it as being gray, for instance. Mm. The, the car hasn't changed, the color hasn't changed, mm -hmm. but yet we're not perceiving the same reality. And that's only a really simple example. So you can see if... Is that like color blindness? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Color deficient. We call it color deficient because there are very, there are very few people who are color blind. Oh, oh is, is there really a politically correct way to say it? Uh, yeah, there is actually. Really? It's, being color deficient is far, far more descriptive than being color blind. Huh. Approximately 8% of men are color deficient. Right. So they perceive shades of color that necessarily aren't the actual shades that are out there. What color is that? That's brown. Right. Very few women are color, color deficient with a curious No, I was testing myself, that's all. <laughs> okay, good, good. But that's just a belief. So I would look up the window and say, oh, did you see that gray, that brown car go by? And he'd say, no, no, it's a gray car. Really? And that, that's just a really simple example. I mean, we both see well. Okay. We're both, uh, we don't have any mental health issues. We don't have any it's just neurological one of those issues. Things. So then you, you take that to the next level where, you know, maybe somebody has an eye disease or maybe somebody only does see in black and blue. So they're going to perceive the world as being far different than mm -hmm. you and I. And that may be normal for them. I, I met a, a guy in the oil patch and he would, he actually saw everything in black and white. He's like, I see like a dog. I was like, black and white? He's like, yeah, man, I see everything in black and white. But I never, didn't always see it in that shade of gray and white. He had um, he had the ability to see color in his younger years and something happened and he got an eye disease and then it started to deteriorate a little bit more and blur and then they tried to fix it and then it just went full black and white. And he said, yeah man, I'm going blind. Slowly. Like, like just... That is his, his, his reality. The question is, is his reality the wrong reality. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all my perception. It's mm -hmm. just so interesting the way that mm -hmm. we all have to live with something like that. It's yeah. Just... yeah. So if I'm trying to convince you, no, 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 that's a red car, and I'm 100% adamant that that's a red car out there, and you say, no, no, it's a gray car. Yeah. Um, who's wrong, who's right? But then you get into some of the more uh, difficult things. Like what? Um, you know, say that red car gets in an accident with a green car. Yeah, or Did say, your okay. mind explode? Like, <laughs> no, it just, it just sees it the way it sees it. So, but you can see how it's quite easy. I mean, that's one one simple example. Okay. So you can see how you've got a, a mental health issue, or you've got how common is mental health issue and issues with the eyes? Like legit, I have a mental health issue, mm -hmm. and does it? ever affect the eyes that much or but I tell people, especially people at my older patients or older my older patients, if your vision actually does vision and hearing and your senses don't actually maybe not so much vision and hearing, that it doesn't actually come from your eyes and your ears. It's all processed in your brain, your brain sorts it out, makes sense of it, and then it gives you what tells you what's going on. If your brain's not healthy, you're not going to be seeing and hearing properly. 
Mm. Now, I can't speak to the hearing end of it because I'm not an audiologist, but I know if you're not feeling well or your brain's not healthy, you're not going to be seeing well. And they don't. No. This is seriously good. This is really, yeah, I told you the pretzel like, was good. Mm. Totally look, at all, look at all those legs on that thing. Have you seen those videos of a person swallowing a live one? Uh, or off the thigh? Yeah, no, I might pass on that. Yeah, me too. I think yeah. that's kind of cruel. Yeah, I kind of... Yeah, you're, I, you know, you're, I think your food should be dead before you... I think there's a lot of animals you need to tell that to first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well... Like I said, we're a little higher up on the food chain. I don't know. Yeah. Humans eat everything. <laughs> we do. I mean, by that, I, by that I, I suppose you mean higher up in the food chain. But we just, we tend to eat everything. <laughs> we do, but we do have the technology to cook our food. Oh, well, there's a lot of things that are good raw. Cookie dough. <laughs> <laughs> what else is good no, mind you, I was in Burma. What was it? Okay. Southeast Asia. Right. And one of the, the big delicacies, which I don't see on this table, which is probably a good thing, is um, some type of beetle fried in oil. Oh, yeah. Very, yeah. Very good. I don't know. I never tried one. So, one of the most... So, my theory is if it's fried in oil or fried or somehow coated in, in some type of fat. Uh, it's tasty. We like to eat it. And that may be a... Has trans fat equal good. <laughs> that may be a genetic thing that we've developed because if you think, go back, you know, even up until the last hundred years, I mean, we didn't get a lot of fat in our diet. Actually, if you read Reader's Digest from the 1930s, mm -hmm. one of the things the U.S. government was worried about was people eating enough fat in their diet. Really? It was a huge concern at that time, yeah. Really? Wow. Because yeah. um, fats are, and more so uh, salmon and vegetable oil fats are really important for brain development. Yeah, it is. And basically the brain runs off of fat. It's covered in fat. Yeah. 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 So that, that was a huge concern in the 30s. Uh, I don't see any of those articles being printed now. <laughs> no, it's like now the complete opposite. Yeah, yeah. Stop eating fat. You're eating yeah. too much. Yeah. Trans fats, no. Everyone just go keto. You a big pickle, pickle fan? I'm a big pickle fan. You can have those because mine are better. Ouch. I respect that. I'll bring them to the Toastmasters potluck. You'll see what I mean. Do you spice your own pickles? Like, they, like actually, like, not just pickle them, but spice them? Oh, yeah. Oh, good girl. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. My husband's and me. My husband and I make the best pickles. I'm so excited now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this has been a fantastic talk. Okay. But let's wrap this up, devour the rest of this. Mm. Where can the people find you? Chicken moose? Yeah. Um, two, at, currently, I'm at 217 Finlayson Street. So if you come off the bridge, you take your first right, and I'm in the medical dental building right in front of you. Right. In a few months, I will be at 314 Finlayson Street, which is half a block down the street away from the water. And you have a wonderful social media person that takes care of all your stuff, don't you? I do. So what do you, where can we find you online? Uh, SickMooseVisionCare.ca right. No, sorry. SickMooseVision.com Or you can follow the office renovations on my Facebook page at SickMooseVisionCare. Are you ex like completely expanding? Like doubling the triple, size? Triple the space. For anything particular? Like are you adding more services or are you just like having lots more frames? We we're just, if, if you've been to my office at 217 Finley Sim Street, then I'm sure some of the people have, right. they will totally understand why I'm, I'm moving because it's, it's, it's a very, <laughs> yeah. So we're going from 550 square feet to, oh, that's tiny. Oh, I know it's tiny, to uh, 1550. 
That's awesome. So triple the space essentially. And what's your Facebook? Uh, Sigmus Vision Care. On Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy. Don't forget to check out the Barley Stations where we are. The Bavarian. Is it? Pretzel. Wow. Graham pretzel and a bunch of calamari and the kombucha. And the kombucha. What flavor was that? Pomegranate. Yeah. All right, guys. Take it easy. Peace. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Your attention means the world to me. Please, please, please share this. Pass it on. And tell your friends it's the best podcast in the Shushua. <laughs> Let me know what you thought. Have a good day.